decided to do this because the birds are singing right now. And um, we wanted you to be able to, when you go for a walk, to um, kind of know, first of all, visually what the major birds are that you're seeing. And I know, that, you know, a lot of islanders are quite observant and we have so much nature around us that we see, you know, the birds that we see commonly. Most of us know what they are, but there are some that are a little bit more cryptic, like the warblers, and um, and and especially their songs are sometimes hard to connect up to the bird. So and they they're singing now, so now is the time to to think about this. And, um, and then you know they don't sing for long. Actually, they'll stop singing. They'll you know. Things will start to get quiet towards the latter part of May. So if you want to learn these songs, it's good to get out and try to dig them out right now. And really the best way, Trudy and I were talking about this the other day, that we both were lucky enough when we were young naturalists to be able to work with, to learn uh, some of this stuff from really experienced older naturalists. And uh, I still remember someone named Bristol Foster saying to me, you know, the best way to learn a bird song, you can look in the books and you can listen to, to recordings, but you, you just need to go out there and track that bird down, like follow that song with your binoculars until you see the bird. And that's the, really the best way to learn bird songs. But there's some great aids right now that we didn't have, like um, bird recordings and, and apps. Like on, on your phone, you can get something called um, iBird Pro, and we're, Trudy and I are going to be using that today to play some bird songs for you. Uh, so when you're out, you know, out on a walk and you think you, 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 you know, you think you know what the bird is, then you can just check the song on your app. But there's also another program called Song Sleuth, which is, I think it's about $9 to download. No, Song Sleuth is free. It's free? free. Well, it's free. Anyway, it's like Shazam for birds, or you can hold it up to the bird song, and then it'll tell you what it is, which is brilliant. Uh, I haven't actually used it. Have you used it, Trudy? Not um, particularly a bit, but yeah, not that. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, and then, you know, you always want to have some field guides to check up. And, you know, I still like books, not just phone apps. So uh, my, my favorite go-to is the um, National Geographic Field Guide to Birds. And it's got, it's got um, painted illustrations and range maps that tell you like what season the bird is where in North America. Um, and then there's these um, sibling guides, which are not really field guides because they're so heavy, but they're, they're great. Yeah, here's the, here's the little, oh yeah, there's two volumes. Here's the little field guide, but then there's, uh, you can get the um, sort of, um, expanded almost reference books like the Sibley Guide to Bird Life and Behavior. So there's a lot, lots of great books out there. And um, what's the name of the shop uptown? Or up it's north? called, um, it's on Metro and it's the Wild Bird Backyard and Nature Store. Yeah, the, did everyone get that? The Wild Bird Backyard and Nature Store. And it's up on Metro Drive in the north end and they have everything about birds. So that's a good place to go and get when the world becomes normal again. Get no, no, he, he's Are they open. open? He's oh. open. Yeah. Okay, They're good. open certain hours and they have social distancing in their stores. Right. Yeah. So a uh, good place to start. Actually, the easiest place to start would be to get an app on your phone, probably. Okay. So I'm going to hand it over. Oh, yeah. And there's also some great internet sites for research, like the Cornell University site. And they actually have huge archives of bird songs from all over the world. Um, so there's their site is Cornell University, all about birds, and it's fantastic. And then there's the Bird Atlas of BC, if you want to just look up more specific things about BC birds. So those are both internet sites. You can just Google them, and they're fantastic. So I'm going to turn it over to Trudy, and she's going to talk to you about bird songs and calls. Now we have to do the slides, the first slide. Oh, well, hold on. We've got a slideshow here. We'll get the slideshow going. Ah, uh, so on here. What's this? So we are there. So firstly, I thought I would talk a, bit, a little bit about how birds actually sing. 
because if you they're quite it's quite remarkable when i really look this up i did take it in biology however birds have a different we have lar uh, larynx and voice boxes birds don't have that they have what's called a syrinx and the syrinx is shown in that blue part of it and they not only have um one vocal we have one vocal cord they have two and they have two sets of vocal cords and it enables them to um, sing in harmony with themselves it's pretty interesting so the top little photograph there of a bird is what we call the pacific wren and allison will be showing you that in a little bit and play we'll play the song but the underneath it is what's called a sonogram and as you can see from the sonogram the winter wren song is absolutely amazing it goes on and on and on and on it's longer than even shown in this picture and it um it, and they reverberate the sounds uh, the, or the air back and forth over those vo vocal cords and they actually recycle it so they're one of the most amazing singers they're just a tiny little bird but boy can they sing and i'm going to go to the next slide so they but also that it involves a, quite a complex musculature and also brain work to sing so it's very interesting how birds actually manage singing oh now how do you advance the slide Allison? i just click on the one on the sidebar the oh the next one on the sidebar okay so birds um have different vocalizations you've probably all heard the squawk of the herons and the squawks of ravens and things like that but they have different um most of the birds that sing are the perching birds and they have um they have two types of vocalizations in general songs and they have calls and songs are very long and complex a robin song is really a beautiful sing songer and they're associated with their territory courtship and mating so that's why allison said that this is the time of year to hear songs Calls happen at all times of year, and they function as both alarms and keeping the flock together. So um, on the right is a, is a golden crowned kinglet and some other flocking birds that I just, they um, flock around in the winter and they have all sorts, they call to each other to keep themselves together, especially in a complex forest environment like here or a rainforest, they, birds need to be able to communicate with each other. And so they call as a function that the other thing about bird vocalizations is that when you go on a walk you're more likely especially if you don't have binoculars but um having binoculars is the best way to see birds at it, it just gives you a whole new window on birds but if you don't have your binoculars or even if you do you're likely to hear more so sounds that's why we're giving more sounds than you actually see birds i particularly i don't have the world's greatest um binocular vision and I have a hard time spotting birds once I see them I'm really great but um and I have a good memory but for them but I don't have very good spotting so I was very grateful and use my ears and try and keep my ears so they really help you but learning bird songs is a bit tricky a little bit tricky you have to memorize them as Allison and I said the best way to associate them in your memory is to see the bird and hear the bird together and then you really put it together there's a couple of other tricks that you can learn there's different types of songs there's like sing song sing songers so the robin is a sing songer whereas um the warblers have sometimes two part calls or one part calls and then there's different things like the woodpeckers they have the 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 long the cry the flickers and the wood pileated woodpeckers have different calls so if you group them into groups and that always helps learning there's another thing that we use called mnemonics and when we go through the bird calls i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna say some of the mnemonics for those birds and they really help so for example the white crown sparrow which allison's going to show says oh dear canada 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 and so things like that and then various things and different ones have these um, mnemonics which is actually a sort of something that helps you remember so that's one of the things about learning bird songs i think that's all i'm going to say about that 
Okay, it's me again. So now we're going to actually go through a few of the, the birds. And um, so Trudy's going to get the song up while I talk, talk to you about the bird and we're going to put those two things together. So one of the first warblers to arrive in the spring, just, just wait. Oh, sorry. I just <laughs> went up right on. Uh, and they're just, they're probably the most common warbler in North America is the uh, yellow rumped warbler. Jeez, I'm sorry. Just, just wait. Sorry. Um, so they arrive incredibly early when it's still feeling pretty wintry in like early March. And um, they winter in so the southern US and Mexico. So they are migrators. And, and that's um, another sort of major difference between groups of birds is do they migrate or do they stay? So are they residents or migrators? And, um, and the migrators are usually insectivorous because that's why they leave. So because the, the insects um, all die down here in the winter time. And it's also why so many birds flow up to North America in the winter because of the big explosion of insect life. Now the warblers are like the jewels of the forest and um, you know there's a quite a large diversity if you flip through a bird book of North America they're just exquisite um, but most of them are in the eastern part of North America. So there's all these gorgeous warblers that flood up the east coast of North America every spring, less and less every year, unfortunately, but uh, they winter in places like Central and South America, and then they come up to the insect-rich north, and because the eastern forests are so much more diverse in their species, there's more warblers in the east. So, but the yellow rumped warbler is one of our beautiful warblers. And you can see them, you know, quite low down. Here's their call, their song. So it's like a series of, there isn't a mnemonic for it, but it's like a series of little warblers that get faster as it goes towards, towards the end. And then it sort of goes at the end. Okay, so that's the yellow rumped warbler. The next warbler is not quite as showy. It's the orange crowned warbler. And it's kind of the next one that we hear singing. I always, I always like, I think, okay, in March, once the yellow rumps arrive, and I wait to hear the orange crowns because they're next. And you know, you look at the slide and you think, well, why is it called an orange crown? Because it's very difficult to see the orange crown. Once in a while when they're agitated, they'll raise their crest. You can see this sort of burnt orange color on their crown, but you don't really see the crown. Some of these birds were named by, by um, uh, biologists, ornithologists, when they had the skins <laughs> of the birds in front of them and they could see these tiny field marks. Sometimes we can't see. Anyway, um, the orange crown warbler also winters in Mexico and comes up here after the uh, yellow rope. So here's its song. The distinctive thing about the orange crown is it um, has that very fast repetition. Yeah, it's just like a long trill. And you can hear them now. Yeah, they're, they're singing their heads off right now. Okay, so did everybody get the song? It's just a long trill. Yeah, great. So the 